Hello, I am Dr. Athos Kamitas, the inventor of the occlusal reduction burr. I believe that all dentists want what is predictably best for their patients. The occlusal reduction burr takes the guesswork out of occlusal reduction. Finnish carpenters say, measure twice, cut once. The occlusal reduction burr allows you to measure while you prepare the tooth. As you can see, the angled non-cutting stop allows full penetration into the pits, fissures, and inclines of the tooth. The burr is used from vertical orientation, allowing easy access to the occlusal surface. Think of it, precise occlusal reduction every time. Just make a crosshatch pattern on the tooth that when connected yields precise occlusal reduction. No longer will the lab call you for a new prep, metal occlusal, cutoff coping, or to adjust the opposing tooth. The lab will always have enough room for an aesthetic and strong crown that needs minimal chair-side adjustment. Our clinical case today involves preparing teeth numbers 12 and 13 to receive lava all ceramic crowns. Teeth number 12 and 13 have been extensively restored. Fracture lines, extensive discoloration, and recurrent decay are present. Our first step is to provide adequate local anesthesia. The shade is selected prior to the preparation procedure. Shade selection at this point is more accurate as the teeth are not desiccated. The rubber dam is placed to aid in retraction and to aid in filming. Here is the Meisinger 2.0 all ceramic prep model. Step 1 is precise occlusal depth cuts. Step 2 shows those depth cuts connected. Steps 3 and 4 involve depth cuts for axial reduction. Steps 5 and 6 are smoothing and finishing the preparation. The occlusal reduction burr is used to make precise depth cuts from the vertical orientation. I usually start from the buccal surface into the central groove and out the lingual surface. I make several buccal lingual depth cut grooves as well as a central depth cut groove. The goal is to end up with a cross hatched pattern that when connected will yield precise reduction. The occlusal reduction burr is 1.7 millimeters wide, which leaves minimal tooth structure between the grooves. Always double check the depth cuts and deepen them if necessary. Here are the completed, accurate depth cuts. As we can see, our depth cuts correspond to our Meisinger Dentiform Step 1. There are two ways to connect the occlusal reduction burr depth cuts. Generally, I prefer to use my axial reduction burr, a KS1 or a KS2, to connect the depth cuts following the inclined planes. In cases of difficult access and an overactive tongue or pronounced cheek, the end of the ORB or orb can complete the occlusal reduction. Either method will assure accuracy because very little tooth structure remains after the depth cuts. Here is the buckle view of the completed occlusal reduction. And here we see the completed reduction from the occlusal. As we can see, our clinical case corresponds to step two of our Meisinger preparation model. With the occlusal reduction completed, the axial reduction is completed with the Meisinger KS1 or KS2 burr. All restorations and recurrent decay are excavated. The corpace buildups are placed and easily contoured to follow the original incline plane reduction. Adequate occlusal reduction is assured. The preparations are properly retracted with the double cord technique. In areas that I feel I need extra retraction, wisps of cotton soaked in hemodent are helpful. After the cotton and the top cord have been removed, the entire margin should be clearly visible and dry. Remember, the impression material sees what you see at this point. Here we see an accurate impression of the preparations. Notice the clear and continuous marginal detail. The centric bite reveals that we have reduced adequately for the all ceramic lava crowns. Proper usage of the occlusal reduction burr guarantees adequate reduction. The best way to assess the preparation detail is to inspect the poured solid model prior to ditching of the dies. Continuous marginal detail must be readily apparent. This photo shows proper occlusal reduction from the lingual. 
This is the perspective that cannot be seen clinically. The occlusal reduction burr eliminates inadequate reduction. Here are the original teeth. Here are the final properly reduced lava crowns. The occlusal reduction burr allows precise occlusal reduction every time. The burr is available in six different sizes. Ideally, the lab would like two millimeters for any porcelain crown, but would not complain if a greater amount is given. Anything approaching three millimeters risks pulpal involvement. In cases where I need maximum reduction to try and level the occlusal plane because of a super erupted tooth, I use the 2.4 millimeter burr. Short clinical crowns have less retention, so in these cases I may adjust my reduction to 1.8 millimeters. Gold crowns require 1.5 millimeter reduction. Any more and you are unnecessarily buying alloy. Maxillary anterior palatal areas are usually under-reduced. The 1.0 millimeter burr allows precise reduction in this area. The burr is widely available through dealers by Meisinger USA in five packs of individual sizes. A burr block kit is available with all sizes. The suggested use for each burr is listed on the inside cover. The burr is available through Meisinger USA. Please feel free to contact them or your local dealer. If you need more information, please contact me at the following. I would like to give special thanks to my ceramist Mike Serpa. Without his work, the aesthetic result would not have been possible.